up guys today we're making that headboard behind me it's king size headboard we're upgrading from a queen i have a mattress review coming for you as well enjoy and thank you for watching so i'm starting with two large boxes i got these from walmart they were like a dollar 47 each and i'm going to start by taping them down the center so that the parts where they normally would fold over they can't bend anymore i've seen plywood be used but for me it's easier to just use um, poster boards or boxes and it works just fine all you need is something hard and solid for your base Now I'm going to get my measuring stick and make sure that my boxes are the same width as a king size bed. So you can easily find the measurements by either measuring your bed or looking online for the standard measurements of a king, queen, full, whatever size bed that you're making your headboard for. Now I'm going to use my hot glue gun and glue down my boxes to each other where they overlap. I'll do that for the front and the back side and then cover that up with duct tape as well. take my trifold poster boards they're the same height as my boxes are so they line up perfectly and I'm going to use that to make it more sturdy and tape those on top Here you can see that I've already drawn out the pattern for where I want my buttons to be. Also, if you notice that I have on a different outfit, it's because I uh, worked on this headboard over the course of several days. That's why, not because I'm just changing clothes or anything like that. But I'm going to use scissors to poke holes through the poster board where I've already marked where I want my buttons to go. I realized later on that we had a drill, so I ended up going back over my holes using the drill so that they were more circular and easier to get a needle through them. Also, I had to redo my measurements and my holes like two or three times just because I have no idea. It was just a struggle time for me to get those right. I realized I should have measured them in a different way than I went about doing them, but they ended up being even in the end, so that's all that matters. Moving on, we are going to take our mattress pad. I got this from Walmart as well. It was like $17. It's a queen size mattress pad. I have two. So I'm going to cut those down to the size of my poster boards and my boxes so that they line up. You can use one if you want, but two will give you that really fluffy, deeper tufted look. One is okay, but honestly, two does look better. Now I'm going to use my adhesive spray to spray down my boxes so that my mattress pad can stick on top of there. And then I will use the adhesive spray on this mattress pad to stick the other mattress pad on top of it. So I used a pencil and a pen and whatever pointy object I could find to poke holes through the foam on where my button marks are on the back. And then I use scissors to cut out an X on where my buttons are gonna go. It makes it easier when you're actually putting the fabric on there and pulling it to create the tuft. And now we laid our batting out on the floor. This came from Walmart as well. 
the price varies depending on which one you get but it's not super expensive and I'm going to cut that down to size and use a staple gun to staple it to the back of my headboard. And this is what we have so far. Now I'm going to make my buttons. I didn't record any shots of me making the buttons, but if you Google how to make um, your own buttons for a tucked piece of furniture, you'll find videos on how to do it. It is time consuming, but I did have help thankfully. And once I have my buttons made, we're going to start applying our buttons on our headboard. So the marks on where we're putting our buttons are on the back. So you take the needle and you string it through the back of the headboard to the front. Then use the needle to loop the button in and stick it back through the hole. This does take a lot of time and it does get tedious because I've had trouble getting this needle back into the same hole it came out of. So I'm not gonna lie, it took me like 15 minutes to get that first button on there. It's important to pull your thread really tight to get the tufted look. I use a hot glue gun to glue the thread to the headboard and then I cover it with a piece of duct tape. I also use staples to staple the thread and eventually I started stapling in the glue to hold it. And that's all and we're gonna do that for all of our buttons I have 25 total so it did take me a long time to do this but we're gonna use the same process to get all of our buttons onto our headboard After I finish all of my buttons, we're going to tape down, not tape down, we're going to staple down the edges of our fabric by pulling it tight over the back of the headboard. You want to pull it tight, otherwise you're not going to get that, you know, that neat look that you're going for for your headboard. Also, you can cover the back of your headboard up with fabric or boards or something. I just didn't do it because I figured nobody's going to see it because it's going to be up against the wall. And I just didn't want to take the time to do something that I just didn't feel like was important. If I was making this for somebody else, I probably would cover up the back just so it's more appealing. But for me and my husband, he doesn't care because like I said, nobody's going to see it. This is how it looks once we finish stapling down our fabric to the back of our headboard. And these are our final results. It came out amazing. My buttons were even, thank God. I'm so happy with the color of it. It looks great. So I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching.